All right, so uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, this is our webinar on data collection. We're gonna walk through data collection and we're gonna go through a couple of different ways of doing data collection. I believe it's actually three different types of examples. Um, and this is all data collection using a robotic total station. So as I go through this, just know that we're talking about you using a robotic total station, not a laser scanner. We will do another session here in about three weeks showing uh, how to collect data with a laser scanner. So, so I'll do some quick introductions. Um, hi, I'm Corey Bell. Uh, if you guys notice a little bit, I have changed the camera angle just a little bit. Um, I'm still in our office. I just happen to be actually in my office instead of in our training room. So sorry, the backdrop is uh, less pretty than me this year, this time, but uh, you get what you get. So uh, so that's, that's who I am. Um, and the pictures are out of order on the slide here. So um, Sean, if you want to introduce yourself first so people know that you don't look like Kevin. Uh, I just thought you were trying to make Kevin a little better looking. That's cool. Um, <laughs> my name is Sean Thompson. I'm the VDC Services Manager here at Building Point Mid America. Um, I do all the BIM modeling, manage it uh, through a back of house and front of house team, as well as the majority of our training for laser scanning, uh, robotic total stations, and pretty much most of the products we sell. Um, and there's some that I don't. But if you ever have any of those needs, uh, please give us a call. Thank you. Yes, uh, I'm Kevin Coffin. I'm the best looking one uh, on our team here. Uh, and uh, I am the hardware sales manager <laughs> for Building Point Mid America. I've been doing this for a little bit now. Um, and uh, really not a whole lot to say. We'll introduce our team here in a little bit, uh, the other sales guys that we're working with. Uh, I do some of the training as well as a backup to Sean. We're certified trainers here at Building Point Mid America. So uh, we also offer a lot of support and things too. So if you ever get yourself in a pickle, uh, we're the guys that help hopefully help get you out of that. So don't hesitate to get a hold of us. Corey? Uh, so we're going to go through a quick course outline. So as I said, we're going to give a couple different examples of uh, different setups. Uh, with uh, One is a no data setup, meaning that we're starting. We don't even have a plan. Uh, the second one is a with data setup that Sean's going to do. Um, and then we're also going to go back and I'm going to do another no data setup, which is going to be different than the one Kevin's going to do. And then outside of that, we're also going to go over some data collection using your robotic total station. I do want to throw out the caveat that uh, the collection that you'll see me doing live is uh, using an RTS 773 with a T10 tablet with Trimble Field Link with Advanced Feature Pack. So that's what I'll be using. Um, and then just knowing that you can collect data for as-built data or as-existing data. The difference being that as-built is typically while you're in construction, you build it, you scan it, you mark it. That's as-built data. As-existing data is whatever the existing conditions are in that space before you show up to do your new work. And then we'll also do some tips and tricks. And then we'll talk about our next webinar and then cover a Q&A session as well. So this first section here. So, Kevin, if you don't mind coming live there. Uh, Kevin's going to walk through uh, a couple of different modes for system setup, uh, different orientations, um, and then walk you through all the connections there. So, Kevin, bear with me one minute, and I'm going to make you the presenter here. Okay, guys, so uh, I'm glad you made it today. And if you're watching this uh, after uh, the live event, that's okay, too. Uh, please remember, at the end of this thing, we're going to provide you with uh, contact information to reach back out to us if you have further questions. Uh, but uh, if you've been following our webinar series, then you are probably already somewhat familiar, at least with the Trimble Field Link software. And so what I've got up on my screen that I'm sharing with you guys is I've got our virtual layout assistant here. Uh, I call him Jake. Um, and uh, I apologize if I'm uh, using anybody else's name out there. There's a lot of, lot of Jakes out in the world right now. But uh, that being said, also, uh, beside that, I have the Trimble Field Link software brought up. And as we've talked about in previous uh, sessions, We've got four columns up here, create, measure, device, and more. What we're going to do today is we're going to show you how to go through what's called a no data setup. And this is the scenario. The scenario is that, um, the scenario is that you, you are, uh, you've got a project manager uh, that is going to need you to go out and collect some data uh, on a project that's maybe two or three months out, let's just say. Okay, and so he gets a hold of Jake. Jake, I need you to go out. Uh, on the second deck and collect some points, I, then I'm going to bring those points back into my model and do some design work using what you've collected. And Jake, when you go out, I want you to use two known points that are out on that deck because 
I've got those known points back in my model. And so what I'm going to do is as soon as you collect that data, all that data that you've collected will be relative to those two points. So I'll use those two points to orientate it back inside my model. So that's what we're going to demonstrate now is just to go out and, and collect just raw data. Uh, some of you guys may know this kind of like a, as a similar to a topographic survey uh, that your surveyors may use. OK, uh, but it's just going to be raw data collection. So we've got Jake over here. Uh, that he's, uh, you know, we, we're going to be using him to go over and also pass some points. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to go to more. I'll go down to jobs and I'll go to manage. And uh, with that, I'll hit the create tab. We're going to call this data collection second deck. And we always recommend as well to uh, put a date stamp on there so you know what day that you actually went out and, and pulled the data in, okay? Uh, because tomorrow's may be a little bit different, right? So then we'll just go down and hit the Create tab. As soon as I've done that, the first thing that you're now going to see is that we've got a screen that has nothing in there. There's no points, no model, or anything that's been brought in. That's perfect. That's how we want it. So the next thing I'll do is I'll bump up, and I'll go to my device selection here. And I'm, I've already gotten connected. Before we started this, I went ahead and connected up. So we're connected, and all is good there. But I'm going to go to my setup now. So as soon as I select the setup option, I'm going to see two points down here. One is a facing north option where I can just choose to face my instrument in a north direction and just basically go over and hit the set, okay? Aim instrument north. I can hit set and I can just start doing collection. That's if you don't really have, a, maybe necessarily have a reference point that you're going to be pulling in. Uh, I also have another point, another option here that's called a base uh, north and base coordinate setup, okay? So if I've got two different points that I want to use for reference, then I can use a north and base setup, okay? And so by doing that, uh, I'm going to leave it in this mode, get out of this. It tells me to measure two points. And so I'm going to have Jake take a walk, and you can see that we've got the robotic total station kind of demonstrated there. It's, it's, it's connected up to our prism. Uh, I'll have take, uh, Jake take a walk over to the what I would call the uh, northwest corner first. We're going to see if we can get them over here pretty close. Uh, just for the representation of what we're doing, we're going to get him over here. And when he gets close, he kind of pops to the point. We like that. Uh, and then I'm just going to go up and hit my shoot button in my software. Hmm. Okay, and the first thing you see is that it, it brings up and it has elevation zero feet. So uh, I like to make a note here, too, to say that please remember that when we're shooting these control points or some points in, that is the point that we use for our elevation. That's the basis for the elevation for its recording that it's doing right off the bat, okay? And so it tells us down at the bottom, select north and base coordinates. So I'm going to go ahead and select this for my north, and then we'll go back over to our to the site view here, and uh, we're going to have Jake take a walk back down to the other end. You can see Jake, Jake can fly as well every now and then. So we'll get him back over in this corner. Take a look back at our robotic total station. You can see that beam here where we're collecting up, uh, connect, pardon me, connecting up to the prism. But we'll just take a walk over here. Again, when we get close, we pop to it. And I'll go back over again to my shot button. I've got this in fast precision at this point in time. Uh, so it's already taken the shot. And you can see now that we've got us a little bit of a 90 degree uh, angle here. It's pretty good geometry. We want to remember when we're doing these no data setups, we still want good geometry if we can get it. So this easily falls into what we would call a good triangle. So now I'll just select this point, and that it determines that that is the base. So I have north and base selected. I'll go ahead and hit the set word. Now that we're set, I hit the set button. Okay, so it's ready. Basically, at this point, we're ready for data collection. So now I can now go back up. Um, if I want to, I can go to my device, and I can bump down to my reference elevation. What this is going to do for me is it's going to start recording things relative to the elevation as well. So I can either call this zero in here for now inside my input form. You can see I've got 650 foot. So I'm going to simulate that I'm sitting on a benchmark at this location as well. And I'm recording that benchmark at 650 feet even. OK. And so uh, that being the case, it's the same point here. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit my measure button. And so it's measured it. It is now measured it at 650 feet. And so we're good to go there. We like that. And so I'm going to go ahead and walk around now and start collecting some data. So I'll go to measure and I'll go to collect. And as I look around on the side here, I'm just going to take a walk down this side. So Jake, take a walk on the wild side here. We'll get him down and we'll collect right at this column line. That's the goal. And again, I'll spin this around so we can see where the instrument's orientation is. 
and I'll get Jake to get over here a little bit closer to my point. And he pops to the point. That's what I like about it. He's right on the, he's on the money, man. All right. So I'll go up here to my shoot button again. And uh, before I take the shot, I like to go into my input form. And you'll see here that uh, in my input form, I'm really big on putting the underscore in front of my layer. I like to do that because that forces my layer to the top of the list. So if I've got 80 or 90 layers uh, inside my layer command button over here, I can just go in and uh, I know that my layer is going to pop to the top if I've got my underscore selected there. So I'll select that and I'm going to call this deck points and uh, highlight this and call this uh, deck also deck point for the description. And I'll go up here and let's call this uh, D and we're going to start this numbering at 1000. Okay. So I could select the control if I wanted to and make this a control point that would then show inside uh, the Trimble Field Link view there that you have a little triangle demonstrating that it is a control point. Okay, so I'll turn this back off and we're ready to take a shot. So I'll take my shot here. Observation stored. Observation stored. So you'll notice here that we've got D1000 deck point. I hit my I button. I select that point and it gives me the nomenclature that goes with that point, including the N, E, and the Z, 649 So you can see the deck has changed just ever so slightly. All right, and you'll also notice the prism. It's following the prism around, all right? So we'll go back over to, this, uh, to, the, uh, to the view here with Jake. And I'm going to slide up here, and I'm just going to collect a point over here, midpoint, up here on this column line. But we believe we're pretty close to getting on top of that point right there. We'll get over here, and we can see the instrument, and we'll also zoom in on the point. We can see that we could probably go just a little bit more. And I like that, and so let's collect this point. Very good. But now there's something else I want to do. I want to go ahead. Uh, you can see here I've got choices. So I'm collecting right now in point mode, and that's awesome. That's awesome, okay? So I'm collecting that point, and I just did it in point mode. But now I'm going to switch over, and I'm going to start collecting in line mode. So what that's going to do is this automatically will start collecting a line as I go down through here. So I'm going to go down this line now and intermittently and uh, start uh, collecting some points on the line. So uh, Get back over here now. See if we can get on top of this point. It's pretty close to this uh, intersection where that would be. And we'll take a shot on that guy. Observation. Very good. And now we'll take we'll take it on down the road here and get a little bit further down. All right. Let's get over here. Get on this point again. Well, we believe we're on the line. Uh, about right there. We like that. And we'll take a shot again. And if you're watching the screen on the right here, you're seeing that we're collecting, we're collecting points. And so not only that, but we're also, as we're walking, we're projecting and drawing that line on the screen. So you're following that line live as well. So we pop back over to our point or pretty close to it. I'll go ahead and take this shot. All right. And then we'll take Jake for a walk on down this way real quick and get a few more line points. Let's get a point online right here. That looks fine. We'll take that shot. And then we'll do one more coming down toward this other column. Get Jake online again. Flip around here and uh, we're looking back at the instrument. We can see what it's looking at. And let's put him online. Just close to the column. That's fine. All right, and we'll take a shot. Observation store. All right, perfect. Okay, so you can see, you get the idea. Now, remember, I can go back over, and I can create, I can go to create and go to line work, and I can start uh, co uh, just connecting these dots if I want to. I can create a line from here to here if I wanted to. So now we've got that line in there, okay? So you can do it either way. Uh, but if I go back over to collect, I have the arc option where I can actually shoot three points on an arc if I wanted to, and it would project what that arc is. If I wanted to, I could make it a circle. When I shoot those three points, there is one circle that would fit inside those points and it'll throw the whole circle on there for you. So that's an option as well. Uh, but at this point, let's take Jake for one more walk around the block here and get him over here. And uh, I just want to demonstrate that we also have the ability in this mode to go to uh, laser mode. So when we're on laser mode, we can see that uh, I'll get Jake off of that guy, and I'll go over here and turn my toggles on, and uh, I can pull that laser beam right back over on this wall. And when I do that, if you look in the top left corner, 
you'll be able to see exactly what the uh, laser beam is kind of hitting on a little bit closer than you can on the big view there. So then you see that we're on the wall and uh, we're gonna buzz up. And remember, we've got the freestyle tool here so we can drag this laser up where, where I want it to be. And I'll just take a few quick shots on this wall just to demonstrate that we can collect in laser mode as well. And let's go back over to the point mode and uh, I'll take that shot. I, I take that back, let's make it the line mode and I'll take that shot. Observation. So we've got that guy and then I'll rotate this beam back over to the other side of the wall. And let's take that shot. Perfect. We go back over and we can see these last two points we just took are actually showing up now on our screen and still in line mode. You should be able to see my screen now. So well, you want to give me a heads up just to confirm. Okay, good. Thank you. All right, so I want to take a little bit different scenario than what Kevin was talking about. There. Obviously, he was walking into a job site and had nothing. That's obviously good for what you'll get or this or that, right? I'm going to take this a little bit different concept and say that maybe I have two known points on a particular site. Um, those two known points could be as simple as uh, two etches, you know, take a grinder of the sidewalk and put two little X's on the sidewalk and you can shoot those, okay? Could be in this building, like my uh, virtual guy here on the left, could be something on a parking garage across the street or something, right? Um, the point is you have no ones and you have the distance between those two no ones. And we can go out and set the machine up using those two no ones and then start collecting data. Um, basically, I'm taking the approach today that we know how to set up a resection. All of you that are on this call today have been along with us from the beginning. So we're proceeding on that assumption that you know how to set up the resection and just collect data. So we're talking about a little bit different scenario here. So I'm kind of extrapolating on a little bit just to make sure we're clear that this is like a scenario of a hospital mechanical room that's 50, 80 years old. And all you have is this 20 year old blueprint, ammonia blueprint in the basement. But you know from face to face to face to flange, it's 25 feet. Or you know from corner pad to corner pad, or footing footing, or whatever it is, or from flange to footing, it doesn't matter, okay? My scenario here, I know that I have two known ones. They're 57 feet, zero inches apart. So I've already connected my robot and all the stuff like Kevin had done, and I'm basically ready to go. I've got another project in here. So the first thing I would like to do is come in here. Go to more jobs, manage, and all I want to do is create a project. Obviously, it's asking me to name this. I'm going to say collect data Oops. with two knowns. Okay. That will create my uh, project, my final point project. It's a TFL file in your folder, right? Okay. So notice, just like Kevin, I have a blank background when I zoom extent, I have no added in here, right? So the first thing I have to do is come in, you were in our point creation webinar, you may or may not remember this, but we're going to go to create, we're going to go to plan view, okay? And I'm going to come down here to the edit button. Notice it's telling me now it's 32 feet, 9, 11, 16, okay? I actually want to set this to 57 feet, 0 inches, right? Because that's my known between the two points, okay? Angle doesn't matter unless you want oriented an angle. Um, description, I would do knowns. No. No one point, okay? We'll call it CP1 because I'm going to use this as a control point. And following Kevin's advice, I will score control point, okay? Do KCP to know on the control point. I want to skip line this time, uh, but that button right here at the bottom right will allow it to draw a line when I create these points, just like Kevin was doing earlier. So I don't want to do it in this scenario, so I'm just going to click create. All right. So now I have my two points, okay? And I have them exactly 57 feet apart. I have more math, I can see my two points, everything's good. Now, I suggest in practice, once you have created points like that that you're going to use for control, to go into the point manager, go down here, select window of my two points, 
and I'm going to edit. I'm going to make some control right here. Now, in this scenario, if I wanted to set these at six feet, the same as Kevin had done, I could do that. If I knew what the finish elevation was, I could do that as well. Okay. Right there, I'm just going to hit Apply Edit. And as you notice, now I get control points. I get the control point symbol. And just to verify, just because I uh, like to verify things before I actually do anything, I'm going to measure between the two points. I get exactly 57 feet. Okay. Now, if I switch over to my virtual dude, I'm going to show you guys how fast he sets up a robot here. There he goes. Okay. So, I hit that button. He levels up pretty quickly. Um, those of you guys in the field, you got some work to do. Just catch up with this guy. Okay. Let me find my target again. Okay. We're locked on. Notice my prison settings uh, went away, so we're good there. Okay. So now I am going to device and set it up. Okay. So I'm treating this as a recession with those two points I put in here that are 57 feet apart, right? Okay. I change my view here back to my dude. And let's go to control point one. Okay. I'm going to draw my guy over here. Okay. Get around here so I see what he's doing. Okay. Oops, wrong button. Of course. But he likes to practice his robot setup, so he gets practice again. Okay. I'm going to find my president again. No big deal. Uh, back on my prison, so now I'm going to take the shot to the first point. Okay. Notice mine's measuring a little bit slower. It's taking one, two, three shots. I have mine on high precision. Kevin had his on fast, which I'll switch here in just a moment. Okay. Now I want to select my next point to shoot before I move. Good practice to do. I'm going to take this shot as well. One, two, three. Should come up with the results here. I should be within about 15, 16 to three quarters of an inch. I know that they're not exactly right. The reason I'm being is I didn't lock on perfectly here on my guy, but we see I'm about a three quarter out. Okay. So I'm happy with that. Although it's a poor shot, I wouldn't really want to accept that. I'd want to work with my angles a little better and widen this up some. Um, but I'm going to hit set for our discussion here, okay? So at this point in time, I'm ready to go into major and settings. I wanna go ahead and change my laser settings to go from high precision to fast precision so that you don't get that one, two, three shot and that delay. Um, that is more accurate, second three shots than average in the three. So if you, you want to do that on the initial points, and then once you get to collecting and laying out, you can switch to fast precision. But it's not going to hurt in high precision except your own um, impatientness and your frustration that it's taking one, two, three shots. So if I switch back here, we'll be able to see that. Okay. If I go over my virtual do here, let's say this, uh, I'll try to get close to this X here. Let's say this X is. Spot I'm trying to find, okay? I'm trying to record this information, okay? I like that. Now I'm going to measure, collect, and I'm just going to uh, set my stuff up just like him. I want to call it uh, build as built. Actually, let me call it FC-100. One thousand, we'll call it one thousand. It's a field collected point. Description field collected. As built. And then a layer will be FC collected. Okay. That's point time. If I just take that shot, notice how much faster that went. Shot like that, you need a field collected point. Okay. 
And then I don't need to show you any more of uh, just collecting more and more data. It's the same stuff over and over. Kevin showed you great examples. I could just switch to laser mode just like he did. Um, so keep that in mind. You could just make two random points anywhere you got. Um, don't be afraid to take the same concept and sharpies and post it to stick them on walls and make measure from center to center. Shoot the laser at it and collect that data and use that as control. Um, Obviously, you want to use your first generation and your second generation control normally, but you get an attention you set up using first generation control. Don't be afraid to shoot this legend at a wall or a beam or something like that and collect that data. And that can be control, secondary control once you get inside the building and maybe eliminate some line of sight issues or if they scan this building and you can no longer see out, um, that can help you as well. Um, so as both what Kevin and Sean were doing is they showed a couple of different setups. As I said, I'm also going to get my hands dirty on this presentation. So I'm also going to do a data collection here. Uh, but before I jump into that, I also wanted to kind of walk through data collection and what you can collect. So it's limitless what you can collect. Um, anything that you can spatially see or orient within a space, you can collect that data. So whether it's flanges, the location, uh, flange locations, um, even the clocking of a flange for a uh, jockey pump, different things like that. You can collect all of those points and have all of that. Building corners, as Sean also kind of talked about, your first gen, your second gen control points. Um, it's always key to record those as well. Um, anything that you may need to record, you can capture. Um, and then once you've captured the point, and, and what I want to drive home is you've got to collect the point first, and then after you collect that point, um, you can then create uh, data from that, which is also one of the steps that I'm going to show you. So you can create 3D representations of that space. The example I'm going to give here in the video that I'm going to do here is I'm going to record a room and I collect the floor plate, then I collect the ceiling plate, and then I start drawing in line work to create a wireframe of that. And from that, I'm also going to show you the example of how I can export that data. So I can export it as a DWG or an SKP file. So I'm actually exporting a real drawing file at that point in time. For those that know your file types, a DWG is drawing, uh, it's kind of your AutoCAD extension. Uh, but there's a lot of programs that allow .dwg files to be imported. A .skp is your SketchUp file. So again, both drawing files, as well as I can export a CSV file as well. So your CSV is just your point file. So obviously that's no line work, uh, nothing fancy. It is just the points themselves. So in this first video, again, I want to reiterate, in this video, um, I am using a RTS 773. Reason that's important is A, it's got the red laser. B, it's also got the Trimble Vision, which is the onboard camera inside of that. I'm also using a T10 tablet with Trimble Field Link. And in that Trimble Field Link instance, I happen to have the Advanced Feature Pack. Uh, otherwise, some of, some of you may know that as the 3D Models Pack. Um, so in this video, and again, this is a recording that I did on the 17th, so you'll see me date a couple of things the 17th. Um, I recorded this, but the first thing I do is I go to Jobs, Manage, and I create a new job. So I'm going to type this in. I call it BPMA Training Room, and then I'm kind of weird about this. I always type the date in on the end of files just so I know when I'm capturing data or I'm recording things. So I put 6-17-20 on the date for this one. And I go right in and I hit create. And again, don't make fun of me. I know there's a space between training and room. Um, I have typos. So one thing that you'll see in this video is you're seeing me walk in the left side. So what that is, is you're actually seeing the camera on the back of my T10 tablet. And so you're seeing me walk over to the space. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a setup. Now, the first thing I did there was I tapped the notepad while I'm on the setup. That's where I can set my first known elevation. So if I want to set it at... Uh, anything other than zero, that's what it's going to capture it as. So where you can change that is, again, this little uh, notepad down here in the bottom. Anytime I click on that, I can change this. So what I'm doing right now is I aimed the laser, and I shot in one corner. And I'm sorry if you get motion sickness. Uh, the tablet's kind of the camera. Uh, I can't really see what I'm doing when I'm doing it. So now I'm zeroing in on another corner. And again, I was just capturing the top of base in these spaces. So if you look in close, you can actually see over here, 
where I've got the laser. And as I get it close to where I want it with these main dials, I can then use these nudge buttons as well. And nudge buttons just move it about a 16th or 32nd of an inch, allowing me to get the accuracy I want. So it's not quite a 90 degree angle like Kevin had, but it's within the range of what I can use. I selected this option as north and the other option as base. My setup's done. Now I can go over to my next recording piece and I can actually start capturing data from that point in time. So bear with me here. So now that I've got everything set up, now I'm gonna start recording data. So again, what I'm recording is, I'm going around this room, this happens to be our training room here in the St. Louis office, and uh, the first thing I do is I'm gonna start with name 100, and then description, I'm gonna call this floor, um, corners, um, at uh, top of base. And so I had, uh, I couldn't quite fit at top of base, so I had to edit that just a little bit. And then I've got the layer set to collect 61720, uh, just understanding that you can create your own layer names for whatever you want to name them. Um, the reason I'm doing these at 100 is, I'll show you here in a minute when I do the line work, every point that I collected at 100 level um, is identifiable by the number. It'll be 100 through 108 or whatever it may be. Um, and then when I did the ceiling layer, I did those at 200. And again, that way when I'm looking at the points otherwise, and you'll see this, as I start to collect these points, it'll just be points floating off in space. So now I'm going around the room and I'll kind of speed this video up a little bit because I'm just going and collecting every corner. So I'm collecting every in and out of a beam, every in and out of a corner. Again, just showing the example, you can see the laser kind of being chased around uh, as I'm doing these, but I'm simply aiming the laser. What I like about the visible laser too is A, I'm recording corners. I couldn't get my prism and pull over to these corners without holding it at an angle. And as you all know, um, we don't have tilt compensators in our angles uh, right now. Um, we do have a GPS unit that will have a tilt compensator, but wasn't using that inside, obviously. So as I use the laser, I can collect right onto those corners, capture the data that I want, and move on to the next one. And I can visually see that laser. It's kind of hard for you all to see it, but now I'm collecting the uh, corner, um, the outside corner there grabbing it, and then again, I'm up in the upper right, I'm hitting that button. A lot of us like to call it the starburst button, but that's the shoot button, as you heard Kevin refer to it as. That's to take the shot. So I've got the laser where I want it. I like it, and I'll take the shot. Same thing as when you're doing layout. You get to your point, and you hit the take shot button. I also do want to point out that on the screen, I've been using the dials, so the, the radio control car type dials, if you will, so one to spin it left and right, and the other one to provide height adjustment. I can also take my fingertip, and as I take my one fingertip, tap it on the screen, and I can rotate it around this way, and it's going to move the laser the way that my finger's moving. Now, up in the upper right, you see right now there's a turtle button. If I tap that, it turns into the lawnmower button, and just kind of think back to uh, mowing your lawn, if you will, um, when you floor it you've got the rabbit mode on but down it's typically a turtle mode so that's your uh, fingertip button so just understanding when you're on the turtle mode it's going to be micro movements that it's going to pick up um, when you're on the other uh, turtle mode it's going to go really fast and, and kind of wicked quick around here so one thing that i'll point out is you just saw that last pointer on the base that i collected was beyond my setup so it tells me that that hey, this is beyond your setup of control. And if you remember our initial setup uh, meeting a few weeks ago, we talked about how you shoot point one and you shoot point two over here. And if one is 100 foot and the other one is 150, I created a 150 foot radius around me. I just exceeded my radius for that uh, 0.107. I went ahead and captured it because I understand what I'm doing. I'm capturing data at this point in time, not doing layout. And now I'm up to the ceiling, uh, creating a couple collected points there. Um, again, this is our training room. So if you actually look close, you'll see a couple of reflectors and different things like that stuck up on the wall because that's kind of our multi-purpose room. Uh, we use it for a lot of different things. So again, I'm now collecting my next point. And then after I shoot this one, as I go to the third one, I'm actually gonna turn the Trimble Vision on. And the reason I'm doing that is just to show another way to use this tool. I know Kevin kind of referenced it. So I'm gonna get it kind of close to the corner and then you're going to see, I'm going to tap the camera button. And when I tap the camera button, Trimble Vision is going to come on. And it always takes a minute for it to catch up where it's at. Now, from Trimble Vision, I can actually click right up here on the tablet. And then the laser is going to move to where I tap. 
and then I can look at it, see if I like that precise position. If I like it, I go ahead and hit the shot, which is what I did. And now I'm going to go off and I'm going to start collecting the next few points. So I just wanted to show you all another option. So instead of using the uh, different control modes, um, you can also use the camera. And that's one really slick thing about our camera uh, and tablets to see able to do it. Yeah, Sean? Any chance I can interrupt and ask a question? My video is playing. Absolutely. Here. Uh, just to give some people some reference here, how long did this take you to collect these points in our training room? And it's approximately 250 square feet. Um, yeah, what, what did it take you, 20 minutes to do this? Um, yeah, I'll be vulnerable and tell you, it took me a total of a half hour, but the first three were practiced because I kept forgetting to hit the record button. Uh, so the fourth time I got it right, all in, it took me, uh, I collected seven points at the floor, seven points on the ceiling, and less than 10 minutes to create the file get everything done and do the export. This video series is actually live. So thank you, Sean, great question. Okay, thank you. Uh, and like I said, um, being, being vulnerable, I, I forgot to hit record about three or four times. So um, our office manager may have uh, heard my Tourette syndrome kick in that day. So, um, so that's it for that video. Now I'm gonna go off to the next one. And I only broke this up a little bit to make it easier to kind of flow through these. Um, so in this video, I'm going to start making line work. So you can see all these points floating around in space. I'm orbiting them on purpose to kind of disorient or disorient you. Sorry, I can't talk. But as you can see there, I've got my point set up at 0 0.200, 0 0.201, 0 0.202, 0 0.203, 4, 5, 6. And again, 0.200 was my ceiling level. 0.100 was my floor. And so I'm just playing connect the dots. So if you can think back to your Mad Magazine days, hopefully you remember those days, and I'm not the only one, uh, but I'm just playing connect the dots from those. And I do wanna point out there, if you have more than one point on top of each other, when I tap it, it's gonna pop up a sub menu to say, did you want point 100 or point 102? So if you accidentally put more than one point in a location, um, just know they'll be stacked on top of each other. And when you tap one, it'll pop up and say, did you want this one, this one, or this one? So it shows you that a couple of times because I do have a few on top of each other. And most of that is because if you remember my base and my north were also part of the data that I collected. Now I'm gonna go from what I'm collecting, I'm gonna shoot to a layout. So I went to measure and layout and it's now re-aiming at one of the points that I collected. And then I'm gonna turn vision on again now with the line work turned on. So once this catches up, so if you notice very quickly there, what I've done was the line work that I collected the points that I collected are now saved out here and I can see them. And this is one of the features of Advanced Feature Pack. I'm not trying to sell that. I just want everybody to know if yours doesn't do that, it probably does not have Advanced Feature Pack. Um, so I've collected this data out here and I've got everything sitting there ready to go. It allows me to visualize that. And then on top of that, I can change the color. So over here on the right, I've got a button that's kind of got a yellow dot, a blue dot and a white dot. And from that, I can change the color of my layout point. So again, I'm gonna do that one more time where I'm gonna go over and I'm gonna shoot a point. I'm gonna let it measure and keep in mind, just like on your layout stick, on your on your layout rod, it's gonna give you the same menu when you're on laser mode doing layout. So now I'm gonna hit the camera mode back on. Again, let it catch up. Once it catches up, it takes the line work and orientation that I just made, lays it over the top of each other. And again, just gives me a good visual reference. So if I'm collecting, I can turn this on and go, yep, I'm confident I got what I need. So now, once I've collected what I need, and I jump out of this video, and I move on to our next slide here, I can take that data, and all that I did was from the tablet, I went up to jobs and export. So once I hit the export, it allows me an option, and it pops up, and it says, what type of file? So the first box off on the left side says, what type of file do you want to export? I can pick DWG, SKP, or CSV. Obviously, I wanted to export the DWG, so I hit the DWG, and there's a couple other options throughout there. So one of them is a checkbox that says, include line work. Well, yes, I included line work. So on this, what you can see from this image, and all that I did was I took AutoCAD and opened that file that I exported, and from that, you can see, here was point 200, ceiling corners, 7.54 feet. You can see the base and what the zero elevation is. Um, you can see point 105, and you can see the difference in of the elevation from this office space. So it's not perfectly flat floors, but you can also see all the line work that I created. And again, just this was collected in about 10 minutes 
and then opened in AutoCAD and it took uh, just a couple of minutes for AutoCAD to open. It actually took longer for the program to open than it did for the file to actually open itself. So <clears throat> I'll go through a couple tips and tricks here and then I'm gonna hand the baton back to uh, Kevin and then we'll do some Q&A. So a couple of tip, tips and tricks. So one of them was no orientation set up and that's the one thing that Kevin kind of drove home is these still require good geometry, meaning you still want to have your good right angles, your 90 degree or close to 90 degree. Kevin showed you one that was almost 90 degrees. I showed you one that was probably, I don't know, I'd say 105, 110 degrees, not quite 90, a little bit bigger. Um, so that's just a, another key point that we want to make sure everybody understands. Um, after that, defining true north or plan north on the plant. So um, that view north setup, just understand that orientation is important because if you're exporting the model outside of that, you need to understand the difference between true north and plan north. So the reason that I'm driving that home a little bit, and I know Sean can uh, reiterate this just as well as I can, true north is straight up true north. On a compass, north is this direction. Plan north is um, kind of, for lack of a better way of saying it, the architect or some somebody on the project stakeholder side will kind of jockey the plan around and say, okay, exactly north is this way, but you know we're gonna call this plan north because this is our general orientation. So just understanding what you're doing, uh, north and that north setup is gonna uh, echo everything for when you're doing an export from here. You're still gonna have some jockeying to do to get these to line up when you do an export, but it, it's gonna get you at least within the, the right uh, face, if you will. Outside of that, uh, verifying the plans that you're using. So the example Sean gave, using a PDF file, opening that and, and using those measurements. Please, please, please verify the scale of those drawings and just understand what you're working with. And I can tell you just from my own being vulnerable, um, I can't tell you how many times I worked off a set of half size prints and was scaling something off and then had to remember, oh shoot, these are half. So you gotta go half of that. So just little things like that and or remember that whoever created the PDF that you have may not have exported pro exported it properly. And what I mean by that is they may not have had a, a good PDF writer. Maybe they opened one PDF and made another new PDF after they zoomed down. So you always check little things. And so, you know, tips and tricks, as I know most of you know, the easy one is go to a door opening and see if it's three foot. If it's not three foot, you've got a problem. Um, go to parking spaces. If they're not between nine to 10 foot in width, you've got a problem. So it's little things like that. Um, also, uh, one of my favorites was always find a bathroom. Find a bathroom and they'll have that architectural circle in it that's six foot. So it's just little tips and tricks like that to keep in mind. So I know I've been burned by that one. I know Sean has as well. Um, Recording data and using naming nomenclature. So the example I gave was I used 100 at the floor, I used 200 at the ceiling. Um, it's just for your own consistency. So when you go back to reuse that, you remember, okay, at 100 I was recording this, at 200 I was recording that. It's just gonna make it easier for you to reuse that data in the future. And the last one, which sounds really obvious, but we, we all kind of become guilty of this, is planning your collection before you go to do the, plan, the collection. So what I mean by that is understand, I want to collect this, so I want to be able to put my RTS right here. And from my RTS right here, I can see that I can shoot a 90 degree angle this way. So just understanding that little bit of planning and then also knowing that, okay, I'm going to collect this data. And guess what? You can keep that job open and I can do a new setup for my RTS and I can use one of the previous laid out points to now resection my new setup. So all that setup starts to add in and, and make sense. So just understanding the data that you need to get out of doing that collection. So if you're doing the collection for somebody else, emphatically drive them nuts. Ask them a bunch of questions. Well, do you need this? Do you want this? What do you need? Especially if you're using an RTS. If you're using a laser scanner, you basically just lit off a bomb of laser in there. So you collect everything. But with an RTS, it's this shot that I collected and this shot and this shot and this shot. Kind of like what Kevin and Sean both showed you. So just keep that in mind as you're going through those. Kevin, do you mind taking us through other resources? All right, yes, so uh, thank you, Corey. I think you can hear me okay. Uh, so other resources, we always like to uh, talk about just uh, bpmidamerica.com, our website. So we encourage you to come out and visit our website. We've got a lot of useful information on there. Um, as well as uh, rental rates and things like that. So come check that out. Learn.trimble.com. If you've not set up 
your profile on that yet. There's a lot of free learning there to be had. So when you're bored, if you got a little rain day or something like that, where you can pick up some more tips and tricks, go to learn.trimble.com. It's a really good resource. Uh, we've got our own uh, YouTube uh, link there, YouTube at uh, Building Point Bit America there. So we've got a lot of good videos. Uh, for instance, this video is going to be up there as well as a lot of the others that we've gotten from our webinar series. So take the time to go check that out. Start following us. Uh, use that as a, as a valuable resource when you're in the field. You can pop in and check things out and try to get answers to a lot of your own questions. Uh, as always, you can schedule on-site training with uh, any of our certified trainers. We'll come to your job site if we need to, whatever, and we'll incorporate uh, whatever is going on in your job site into the training if that's what you prefer, or we can keep it more simple. We can also offer up virtual training if we need to do that in light of everything that's going on right now, okay? So keep that in mind. Trimble Film Link User Guide, that PDF is on your surface. It should be there, the latest, greatest. Remember to go out and check uh, the Trimble Installation Manager frequently, at least once a quarter, to bring those recent updates in. And when you do that, you're going to get the most up-to-date PDF user guide as well. On the surface, no need to be hot-spotted or anything. You can double-tap that thing and go down through there and get some stuff off of that that you need to. All right, and then buildings.trimble.com is another link that you can go to. And then you can always find us on LinkedIn, Building Point Mid America. So follow us there. So, if, if Kevin, if you don't mind, one thing I want to point out is on the uh, YouTube channel, just so you know, if you click the subscribe button, it'll send you a notification that we've uploaded a new video. Uh, so that's not coming from us. It's coming direct from YouTube. So it just quickly tells you that we've uploaded something new and you may want to take a look at it. So that's where the subscription is uh, pretty important. And then the other thing I wanted to point out, because Kevin kind of talked a little bit about the versioning of the software, current version of Trimble Field Link 5 or Trimble Field Link today is version 5.5. .5. So if you're on anything outside of that, please uh, holler at one of us and uh, we'll uh, help get you up to speed on that. Sorry, Kevin. Thank you. No worries. Yes. So uh, along those lines, we told you we were going to introduce our team at Building Point Mid-America. So uh, I'm Kevin Coffin. I've got Kentucky and Tennessee specifically. Uh, that is my territory that I focus on helping those customers. Uh, as a team, though, we all help everybody when we can. Then you've got good-looking Bob Grone right there in the center, right? He has Arkansas, Missouri. So he's your guy, right? There's his contact information. You'll have all that stuff. And then Charlie, the, the Charlie down, he's the loyal guy, right? So he's got your back. He's going to take care of you. If he doesn't know the answer, he's got a billion-dollar company behind him that does. So there's Charlie's information. If by chance you're listening and partaking in our webinar and you're outside of our service area here that's listed on the map, that's okay. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm going to make sure we get you in contact with the person that you need to con you know, that you need to get a hold of to answer those questions that you're looking for. Okay? Corey, back on you and Sean. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so again, just wanted to kind of point out and save the date, if you will, July 10th. It's three weeks from today. Um, that'll be our next, uh, we've, our data collection is at least three parts. It may be four parts. So part two is going to be uh, going over similar to what we did today, collecting data, just using a laser scanner. So we're going to walk through some of our laser scanners, uh, show you some live examples of using those laser scanners and uh, the kind of data that we'll get out of those. And then the next one is going to be use of that data. So that's on July 10th. So we'll go into Q&A. Um, one thing I do want to kind of... Uh, point out here is, uh, Kevin, this question is really for you. This came in from one of our users out there because uh, they were worried about Jake. Uh, they didn't see his khakis or his red sweater. So didn't know if you wanted to uh, address that this is a different Jake that doesn't work for State Farm. Right. It's a diff it's completely different Jake. Uh, we talked to him about that. He filed a complaint. So we just said, okay, as long as you've got your vest and your hard hat, we're good to go. Very good. Very good. Um, so that's that's it. There's uh, no other. There's really no other questions out there. Um, but uh, one thing that I do want to say. Go ahead, Sean. Yeah, I have more of a statement than a question. And if you go back to your slide, uh, the tips and tricks. Um, I'll just kind of talk about that for a second. Kind of hit on something that's uh, both. Obviously, the defining true north and plan north. Um, you know, most of your stuff with civil guys obviously their civil engineer guy or gal is going to come from in a true north positioning right and all your MEP stuff or GC or foundation stuff typically going to come and plan north and you're going to have to uh, which is where this fits into Corey's last point is plan your correct uh, collection properly 
knowing what the difference between True North and Plan North is and how they are lying on your job site and how you are going to handle that data collection. Uh, that will help you be a lot more successful, uh, just at least trying to marry those together before you actually go out there and lay out, okay? And that's all. So that was my statement. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Sean. Um, so I, I haven't seen any other further questions. So again, I want to thank everybody for their time. Um, I want to hope, uh, or I wanted to wish all the uh, dads that are on the call a happy Father's Day this weekend. Hope you guys have a good weekend. Uh, same for my team. Happy Father's Day to you guys. Um, but uh, have a good weekend. Um, enjoy it. And please let us know if there's anything that we can do to help you uh, or any way uh, that we can answer a question for you. We, we appreciate your time. We appreciate you jumping on these webinars with us. And, uh, and feel free to reach out to any of us to let us know, man, I'd like for you to go further in depth on this topic. We'd, uh, we'd love to hear from you and see what you want to know. And uh, we'll take that deep dive. So, uh, again, thank you. Well, I'm looking much. forward to uh, the the scanning, the scanning webinar, we're going to go in deep into the, the X7 as well and all the new, the new workflows on that. So that's going to be a big deal. I think people will find that very interesting. Very good. And thank you, Kevin. But uh, again, everybody have a peaceful weekend. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank Happy you Father's Day, everybody. Take care. Be safe. Happy Father's Day.